right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Justin Michael, who is up in Los Angeles, correct? Yeah, I actually live in uh, a little closer to Santa Barbara. I'm in that, in that nether region in between. I call it the two horse town. It's like two freeway exits. It's called Carpinteria. We're known oh, yeah. for Rincon, the best surf spot. <laughs> Procore is here, lynda.com, which now LinkedIn Learning is here, and then we have Al Merrick surfboards. I don't surf, but I love to go down to the beach and watch the pro surfers, and there is an analog here to selling. I mean, they are fearless, and it's pretty wild watching them take on uh, some big swells and uh, the level of expertise and how they got there. It, there's a lot of parallels, I think. Yeah, no, hundred percent. You know, my son's a my son's a surfer down here, but oh, surfer, nice. skater, martial artist. So he just likes everything kind of extreme. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so Justin is a sales technologist, futurist, and author, and he is inviting uh, people to join the B two B revolution, join the sales borgs. So, Justin, I mean, obvious question: What's a sales borg? Right. So you have a seller and a cyborg. And it's just a funny thing that uh, my mentor, Tony Hughes, kind of coined because I had cyborg all through this book we're writing called Tech Powered Sales. And we just mm -hmm. thought it was a silly thing, almost like Monty Python, Salesborg. It's, it's got a Monty Python flair. It's got to like Star Trek The Next Generation, like the Borg, which are these mm -hmm. evil machines that there's this alien race that assimilates everything. Um, the original squad of people in my mastermind, I was going to be the Tony Stark, you can have the Avengers, and then it's like, uh-oh, the mouse. Disney's not a big fan of uh, running around on their trademarks. So we just went sales borgs, and it was quirky and weird, and we just thought, let's be the kids that get stuffed in the locker. Let's get really nerdy, <laughs> and let's get super into sending cold emails and doing phone calls and using tech stacks, and let's be this lunatic fringe, you know, like Captain EO or... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. We're out here just like the people in my mastermind are obsessed with figuring out scripts right. and templates and meta frameworks. And are we going to try the Josh Braun method or the Beck Holland method? Or, you know, you, you pick your trainer du jour. And um, we decided we put it in uh, WhatsApp. And then WhatsApp got going. And like all of Tel Aviv's on WhatsApp is about 20 million users. And it's pretty cool. Um, it blew up. I would have 5,000 messages every 20 minutes. So we moved it to a server called Discord. Discord is an app. Mm -hmm. They're a gaming yeah. server. It holds 550,000 people. I grew, the, I grew the community to 450 people. It'll hit 500,000. And they go in there and you have, it's like Slack and Zoom on steroids. Mm -hmm. Like you go in and you have channels like in a Slack, but in the channels you have voice, video sharing. So get this, every day around three or four Pacific, I get in there. And I get on a power dialer, either Connect and Sell or Orem, and I make 200 phone calls in 45 minutes. I do two days of work. I get like three referrals, four calls. I use par parallel assisted dialers. I use you know data that's been pre-called, and it do it really does look like a magic trick. I'm connecting every 30 seconds with these VPs of sales, mm -hmm. and I'm demonstrating a framework I have called RRM, which is Route Ruin Multiply. Again, right, we've got Bant and Medipic and Mandac. Yeah. I mean, we all have our frameworks, right? But the beauty is I'm taking live fire and people are sitting in the round, 10, 20, you know, I think 20 was the most I've had so far. And then after the calls, I'll get feedback. Hey, what do you think of the objections? Or should I have done this? And, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Ryan Reisert's doing something like this on Twitch and he's recording himself on Zoom. I'm not recording, but I'm being listened to and I'm kind of doing right. a live coaching thing. And so I think it's futuristic in terms of, um, some of the things that I've found within neuroscience mm -hmm. and the way emailing and calling is done, I've taken a radical approach. We can talk about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And just before you go, just before you go there, I just, I think that's a, a fascinating that you, you know, that you used, uh, you know, discord. So basically you, um, you went and looked at, I mean, these are gamers, huge, you know, huge communities, fantastic ways of, of reaching people, fantastic scale and all of that. I mean, it's 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 really fascinating the way you looked at that and said okay i can leverage this whereas obviously in in most companies everybody is everybody thinks they're on the cutting edge but they're using all the traditional tools and i say traditional and ones like that have been around for five or ten years yeah so we can learn a lot from the gaming community because i came out of mobile marketing for 13 years 
um, I actually ended up hiring a social media coach, which sounds a little bit like Silicon Valley, like a resident guru or, you know, mm -hmm. like a rollerblade trainer, or like a social <laughs> media coach, right? But there's this lady named String. Gets weirder and weirder, right? We've got Discord. <laughs> I do have a course on a platform called Kajabi, just if this gets even more interesting. I'm basically utilizing the most modern stuff I can think of. Um, well, she was getting a million views of posts. So I kind of said, right. you know, almost like a relevant email, like if that's true, you could help me. And so she's helped me to foster a community around my brand. It's very vibrant. It's a community around getting things done and doing. It's not really a thought community. It's like, right. here are the emails I'm sending. What do you think? Or let me get on a call and I'm going to do calls and watch. And what do you think? And so um, working with her, I've just, I've been able to have an explosive um, growth rate as far as my viewership. I photoshopped a, an alien or a robot on my face. Mm -hmm. There's 700 million people on LinkedIn and yep. never 700 million. I'm the first person to put a robot on my face. Of course, it, wow. it made best of Instagram. So I have a whole lampoon and roast on best of Instagram where it's like, hey, you're a loser. Like it's, it's pretty vitriolic, but I'm not yeah. going to touch it because yes, I'm being shredded in the public eye. I've made it. I must be doing something right. I have a hate club, but it's very focused <laughs> to, to Instagram. So again, right, I'm 40 years old, but I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with the cool kids, right? right it's like right. Tony Hawk. Like he's still making video games and a skateboarding yeah, yeah, luminary and he's in his you know 50s yeah, and he's still his, cool his, um, yeah <laughs> his uh, his place is just up the road um yeah he's there every day uh you know, a lot of money. The ramp yeah yeah <laughs> and appearing everywhere yeah no fantastic business person uh so um so you started all this community and now you're 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 training people but in a but in a you're helping people but in again in a kind of experiential way right yeah, that's the, the, the key for me is, you know, John Barrows is known as the tactician for SDRs. And mm -hmm. I love that. And so I'm trying to fall in the footsteps as a disciple of John Barrows, who came in and literally, I was in a company called Swerve, which is funny, they had 75 engineers in Ireland. I'm picking up that right. you're somewhat Irish. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a brilliant, um, man, I'm going to forget the name of the university there, but our founders had worked on some uh, physics engines for the Matrix. So they're cool people. And we had like a Bayesian logic expert from wow. somewhere in Ireland. What's the famous university in Ireland? Well, there's a bunch of Trinity. Yeah, uh, Trinity. They all came out of Trinity. Yeah, so it was like this I, true... <laughs> that's, that's where I went, but I'm not one of the genius ones. <laughs> yeah, so there's like these mega geniuses out of Trinity yeah. that like did work on the Matrix. So I was like, this is cool, you know? <laughs> uh, so oh, where was I even? I don't even remember the question. I yeah, no, the, no, I was saying that um, that the training that you're doing is very experiential. Yeah, so I'm just saying like gamification, like what is yeah. an SDR? Well, if we're talking a lot, we're not doing sales. It, you're sending an email. You're making a cold call. You're creating a video email. It's a, like we're all in this virtual place, but like a video game, we're doing things. If mm -hmm. we don't do them, if the more passive we are, the less revenue. We can like and curate and tweet. But the minute we start to reach out to strangers and interrupt them, then we have a problem. What the heck do we do to be different than the other 999 people that said, you know, Hey John, in this uncertain time, you know, it's yeah. like, and just template it out, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, look, I'm using empathy, empathy. I'm using a template about Corona, but as long as it looks like and sounds like everything else, it's never going to get uh, open. Yeah, so, yeah. I had these two huge realizations that I think can fundamentally change all of B2B sales, like Tombstone, like you just print it. If I, it's all I achieved, um, the first one is that email, which is a science of words that you send digitally, is about visuals, not text. Mm. An image in an email is processed at 60,000 times faster. Yeah. 60,000 times faster than text. So it's like the five to 12 touches, I send one Venn diagram to the chief digital officer at McDonald's, book the meeting in 10 minutes. One Venn diagram to the VP of mobile for Home Depot, he called my phone and said, pitch me. Now, I've been cold calling him, leaving voicemails, sending emails for five years. One diagram, boom, response. Mm. So I teach people to make these Venn diagrams, almost these mind maps or gestalts of their competitors, uh, like a SWOT analysis of their competitors, and find where their text, the unifier, it's really good in tech. And they create all these beautiful Venn diagrams, and they send them. And I'm like, oh, that one's ugly, and that one's wrong. Send it anyway. And the more confusing it is, and the weirder it is, it's just so provocative. They're like, what is this image? 
think about it. If you're, if you're evaluating Gong and Chorus and Sales yeah. Law and Outreach and you're going, what is all this stuff? And you see this awesome Venn with all the, okay, it, it's automates emails. It does conversational intelligence. Here's the AI, the ML. And you're just trying to figure it out. And someone shows you a visual. Like, whoa, okay, I never saw that. Let's take a meeting. Because you're in the right. space. You're looking at these vendors. And so it provokes. So email is visual, which is totally crazy. And here's the other thing about email. For some reason, this is the craziest insight I could figure out, like Elon Musk style, first principles. <laughs> Every business email is three paragraphs, which takes the brain 13 seconds to process. Right. Who else sends me three paragraphs? The energy company, the government, voting, taxes, mm -hmm. mediation, an attorney, the law. I mean, it's not a fun thing when you're getting multiple mm -hmm. paragraphs, a diagnosis. Yeah. Like, But wait a second. The last 200 messages I sent through LinkedIn, Twitter, text, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, TikTok, Snap, not a one is more than a sentence or two. But when we're right. going to do B2B email, we want to get a you know, seven-figure deal, yeah. let's send you an yeah. expository essay <laughs> in a great American novel. So I was just like, wait, what? And then the mm -hmm. brain, if you do a three-sentence email, process it in three seconds. Actually, you're, we're so good at reading that if it's short enough, you can actually just boom, you can just read it in one second. Mm -hmm. You can just look at it and know what's going on. And so... I decided, which, which, like, raises, which raises a huge challenge for people because remember, like, it's much easier to write three paragraphs than it is to write two sentences. Right. So brevity is the soul of wit and simplicity, mm -hmm. simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And like Hemingway is a genius because he was able to write in these short, concise ways. It's called a flesh Kincaid score. I actually am an advisor for a company called Lavender, like the color. Go to trylavender.com. As you write, it spider graphs you. It's like pedantic studious happy like if grammarly is doing this too in enterprise real-time analysis and, and ranking of your writing but the thing is like einstein said make everything as simple as possible but not too simple and so you're right. sitting here with this piece of gear like an outreach or a sales loft a zant or a groove this this power automated sequencer of your communication you're like what should i write and then you go get best templates or you get these awesome courses and you end up you know deeply researching and writing these big things and you show all this effort. And once you show that effort, you're like, wow, that's great. And then you send it. And then once in a while, somebody will be like, that's the best email I've ever seen. And you feel validated. But the right. problem is that like, if I'm going on a, on a date, right? Like, let's just think of dating context. And I go, you know, I looked at your Facebook profile and I noticed that you love, um, you know, Kenny G. So I, you know, I got a signed copy of Kenny G record. I mean, they would be so creeped out. They'd be like, yeah, what? How? Why? <laughs> and so like these huge templates really convey that like the seller is trying so hard, but the instinct then of the prospect is either it's way too long. I can't deal with it. It's like visceral, yeah. but then they're kind of like, what's the catch? Why would yeah. this person work so hard? Because I think there's probably, it's going to be seven figures. It's probably expensive. What I do is I just go to the C level and I say, Hey John, we, we did this awesome thing for Mercedes. We, you know, we were able to like get their analytics, um, uh, we were able to save, save them $2.1 million by using this cool analytics technology we have. Is that interesting? That's it. Yeah. High level, you're, in a, you're in an elevator with Mark Cuban and he says, what do you do? You don't mm -hmm. bust into a three paragraph delivery. You've got <laughs> one elevator ride. You're just like, yeah. I would be like, hey, Mark, like I've completely reimagined email and phone calling for B2B sales. I have a system no one's ever used. It's a 7X return. It's 7X more mm -hmm. effective. We should talk right. like, okay, interesting. Yeah. So it's like, so this is how I've, I've destroyed the paradigm. What I always say is if you use my system, your marketing director won't let you. It's painfully short. When you get it right, ask for forgiveness, not permission, because marketing say you yeah. can't say that. So that started to happen. And then I, then I decided to re-envision the whole phone thing, and I can explain how I did that. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. So just, just to let's uh, draw a line under the email for a minute. So just to hope everybody picked up on that. So uh, visual and short. And if you do those two things, you should experiment uh, exactly what, you know, Justin's saying right here, experiment with really short emails and experiment with throwing in some visual that is intriguing enough for people to want to ask you what the heck is all that about. Yep. So I call my science the Justin Michael method, and I'm releasing mm -hmm. a book called Tech Powered Sales uh, somewhere in the future in June. So I'm working with HarperCollins. It takes a long time to do all the editing. I'm in mm -hmm. the legacy system. But I call my science the science of heuristics and emotional resonance because all linguistics and text has a subtext. What does it mean? You don't just copy a template 
you mm -hmm. have a knock knock joke to open your template you know knock knock who's there well you don't you don't copy my knock knock joke you go humor <laughs> opener yeah. or you have social proof you're like we help our crm helps companies like you have mobile sellers yeah like acme corp and beta corp that's social mm -hmm. proof that's not to copy sentence two and so i teach people a system of bob ross the painter with like happy little trees mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, so we, we send these hyper short messages really rapidly. It looks more like text messages and the open rates go to 80%. Every time it's like, boom, whoa, the open rate's going crazy because they've never gotten these short templates. The first 18 characters between the subject and the preview text is always wasted. I hope you're doing well. We don't do that. No pleasantry. It's a pattern interrupt. Yeah. So the things go off the Richter with opens and then you have to get a conversion to a meeting. And the way you do that is emotional resonance, storytelling, mm -hmm. right brain, before, after, pain, fear, stressed out by, struggling with, frustrated by, rip your hair out. Authors like Mike Weinberg have gotten this in the sales story. Uh, ben Zoldan, Mike Bosworth in the book, What Great Salespeople Do, yeah. talk about emotional resonance, uh, storytelling, emotional intelligence. The problem with our marketing emails and our sales email, it's like, hey, we work with Coke and you're Pepsi and we got Coke a 234% revenue increase. Don't you want that? Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. There's no, yeah. there's mm -hmm. no like hero's journey or like, you know, all the movies we watch have a dramatic twist and a, a conquering, yeah, yeah. And the but we write these emails that are just these fluffy, happy things, <laughs> right? So then now we go to the phone and if I can, yeah. if you can humor me, here's the phone. The phone is, I call you and I say, hey, John, my name is Justin Michael from CloudTask and the reason for my call. So I say, I say your name, which is perfect. I put a spotlight on you for a nanosecond. And then I say, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm Justin yeah. and here's my thing. And now I'm going to hook you. But we work with Pepsi, so then I'm going to come around and try to get you. It's not – can you imagine – you know what this looks like? It would be like if you went down to the pier to go fishing. And right. the fish started swimming near you, and you, like, shouted at it, and it tried to catch you <laughs> the net. You yeah. know what I mean? And you, or try to, you just try to get do something and get the fish to jump at you. Like, it's never going to work, right? So mm -hmm. what I do, which has never been in any system, is the person answers the phone, and I say – Hey, John, I identify myself, Justin Michael from, from CloudTask. Are you in charge of CRM? Right. And your company's like director of marketing. Mm -hmm. And you would say, I am. Yes, I am. Why? Oh, well, I'm calling from, uh, you know, Pipeline or CRM. Yeah. And they're like, I'm sorry. I use Salesforce. Yes. And now, so that's called routing. I'm trying to first figure out the route. Like, mm -hmm. are you in charge yeah, of it? Yeah. And I'm trying to shift power. You're telling me what you're in charge of. And so then I do this thing where I say, Oh yeah, Salesforce is great. How's that working out for you? Stop. Mm -hmm. This question has made me millions of dollars. I always joke over years, like I got to get it a million a year, but it has <laughs> made millions and I've sold millions of dollars of software. Actually, that's true. Mm -hmm. If I could pull up my, you know, sales records or W2s, like I, that question is a multi-million dollar producing question. Because what does it do? You're happy with Salesforce, but I want you to look at Pipeliner. If I start convincing you of all the differentiators of Pipeliner, you're going to corner yourself and be like, you're wrong. Don't make me wrong. Yeah. It's like a parent-child thing that gets triggered. Exactly. horrible. So what I want to do is validate you. Oh, you inherited Salesforce. It wasn't your decision, but you onboarding anywhere. And here's how you tweak that. It's really great. How you configured it. Or you had to do that and that module. Okay. Then weirdly, and that's probably not going to happen with Salesforce because I work for Salesforce and there's not a lot wrong with it. But let's just say it's other CRM. And you're selling right. it. And they go, you know, I do love it. And I inherited it. It was really good price. But honestly, the service just isn't there. And mm -hmm. then they elicit then what's wrong. So what am I doing? People listen to my phone calls, my group. And like for the first five minutes, the prospect is talking. Yeah, yeah. And they're opening up and opening up. And they're getting calmer and calmer and calmer. And they're seeing me as a friend and an advisor and not combative. Well, yeah, it, it's, like, it's like that simple rule of communication that people tend to overlook all the time. And that's that... Um, people believe conclusions that they come to themselves over anything that you could ever possibly say to them. So your, your role here and what you're talking about here is you're actually allowing me to come to my own conclusions because you're just, exactly. you're just, yeah. So I call it ruin because the best way to get someone to want something is to say, are you happy? There's all this mm -hmm. old Sally Struthers uh, com com uh, <laughs> commercial and she'd say, do you want to make more money? Sure, we all do. At ICS, you get a degree in you know, janitorial arts or something funny like yeah. this. She always mm -hmm. came on late at night and she said, do you want to make more money? And I always be like, yeah, you know, everybody <laughs> wants to make money. So the second step is like, how's it working out for you? Is for you to tell me how great it is, the current status quo. Yeah. And by you telling me like, are you happy? Would you want to be fitter? You want to make more money? Some weird reason you start telling me all the things that are right. And then you're like, 
you divulge something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I call this vampire theory. I'm waiting for the polarity shift. I'm just spotlighting you, spotlighting you, spotlighting you. I'm loosening the line, letting the fish out, right? Because if the fish hits and I pop, I snap the line. So I'm getting mm -hmm. you to talk. And no seller yeah. in the world gets the prospect to talk because I've got to get in the hook. And I've got to move on to the next one and set the meeting. And I'm dead patient. You flip the polarity. You ask me, wait, what did you call it that? Wait, aren't you a serum? What does it do? And the minute they mm. actually have intention to know what you're doing, your polarity is shifted now. Almost like in a deal where you're like selling, 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 and then they're, they've already made, they've committed. And they come back and start hitting you with like, hey, we have to get this done. Procurement needs this. Hey, can I get the PO? So it's flipped on the discovery call. And then on all things you think I would pitch at this point, but I do a multiplier. I say, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't you keep your CRM? Don't rip it out. Try ours alongside it. Why don't we turbocharge right. it? Now, serums are bad. It's more of a rip and put a place. Sure. But yeah, I, yeah. I worked in marketing stacks where the average enterprise has 91 solutions in the marketing stack. So I would just say, keep mm -hmm. it in there. Yeah. Keep your sales force. Plug us in anyway, and we will multiply the effectiveness of your CRM. Mm -hmm. And this was like a multiplier statement. So not only have I validated them, right? I've, I figured out that th what they control and have power over. I validated them, listened to how everything's working and made them feel good and powerful, allowed them to take interest in me. And then when they're interested in me, I don't even sell them. I say, keep it. Maybe I can help you use that product better. And it's mm -hmm. so weird. So this whole thing by the end of it, it's like a magic trick. We're 12 minutes into the call. <laughs> and I just had Josh Braun come in to listen to one of these yesterday. And it was, it was like the greatest honor. And he said it was a very mm -hmm. unique technique. Uh, Josh Braun is one of the people using similar techniques because he's studying Chris Voss. And I always joke, I'm like, how hard is being an SDR if you need to study the techniques of an FBI hostage negotiator? I mean, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what should we get next? I mean, the bomb squad to be able to make a cold yeah. call. But uh, this stuff is converting crazy high. I, I did this an hour a day in Connect and Sell. The last 30 days, I generated $1.4 million in pipeline for cloudtask.com myself with my students watching. Mm -hmm. It's real. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow, Justin, that's a, it's, it's a lot to take in, but it's also, it's very, very, as you said, it's simple, which I'm not equating with easy. Um, but it's a great approach um, in terms of, I mean, I just love that about the phone call. I love that about switching things over and, and actually allowing, the, allowing the, the prospect to go on a journey in their own head. Because I, I think that's one of the key things. I think we're, we just interrupt people all the time. Like we stop people from thinking. We ask a question and then maybe if you pause to think about it, I'll ask you another question because I get a little bit uncomfortable with the silence. Yeah, so it's, I'm teaching a framework um, that is, is all neuroscience derived. And there's a lot of psychology, Freudian, Jungian. And um, it's mm -hmm. also just, I wonked out. Like by the time, by, <laughs> by the time I was 30, I'd read 200 sales books. And I got to talk to Scott Lease. And he's like, that's great. You're like, you're like a purveyor of sales books. He's like, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're long on theory and short on doing. It's like, you should just go mm -hmm. do some of this stuff. I was like, sure. Because I was trying to move to Austin or something and work for him with right. these cool startups. So instead, what I did, I went on a pilgrimage the last 10 years. I went to Salesforce. I worked for Sean Parker. I, I worked in San Francisco. I was in St. Louis. I was in um, New York and Seattle. And I just ran sales teams and ran sales development teams. I was a VP three times. Oh. And I set tons of records. I was never right. any, anywhere long because I had to hit these targets quickly. Sorry, that's my German Shepherd. Yeah, no worries. So uh, what else can I tell you, man? I got a lot of no, methods on the market. I teach the sales borgs. I, you know, obviously the, the point, you get to see my house, it's fun. Yeah. Um, the point of all this is to attract the decision makers above the IC. Because if mm -hmm. I can train all these reps free of charge open source, ultimately their directors and VPs come in and want me to train their teams. And so that's like how I'm actually making a living now as a consultant is I go into companies and I crack the code on all their reps and they typically yeah. double their SALs and they, you know, two to three X their pipe. Now I was joking, Corona flat is the new three to five X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is uh, very much so, or, or, or your slight growth, whatever. But uh, hey, listen, Justin, this has been fantastic. We've covered a lot of great ground here. Um, uh, and I think you've covered also um, what it is you do. And, and so where should people check you out? I mean, all your information will be below this video, but where would be the best place for them yeah, to start? Yeah, I mean, you can go to sales borgs, like sales and cyborgs, salesborgs.ai. Mm -hmm. You can find me, Justin Michael. 
I'll give you everything for a dollar. It's just a troll thing. If you're out of a job, I'll give it to you for free. Just hit me up on LinkedIn, ask for my guide and my technique and to come into my tribe. And uh, we, can, we can go uh, do some free jazz when it comes to email. You know, play a little jazz flute, jump up on the table. Justin Michael, <laughs> uh, no relation to George. I'll sing for you. Yeah. You won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it, Justin. Listen, thanks very much for joining us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thanks.